20. So even though a particular codone is always for a specific type of amino acid, but some amino acids may be specified by more than one codone. For example, let me repeat it that if AAA it goes for amino acid number 10, let's suppose, then A a u may also go for amino acid number 10 or a a c may also go for amino acid number 10 it means three different codons are specifying for what same amino acid it means amino acid number 10 has more than one way of coding system but again but triple a will always mean 10 it will never mean 11 it will never mean 9 so it means a particular codone is specific for amino acid, but a given amino acid may have more than one codones. It means amino acids are less and codones are more. It means codones system is redundant or it is extra, right? So this is the third principle that not only our genetic code system is specific, not only it is universal, it is redundant as well. Fourth quality which is present over there is that our genetic coding system is continuous. Continuous means that it is non overlapping and comma less. I will explain what is meant by this non overlapping and comma less. Let me explain what is really meant by this. On the same diagram we will go. As you know that let us suppose we write A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. I think it is uh, still the ABC same thing as it was in my childhood. It is written like that way right. Now look. Actually ABC mean 1 codone, DEF is the second, GHI is the third, JKL is the fourth. Is that right? Now, if we remove any one of the nucleotide, for example, we remove C, we delete C. You know what will happen to the coding system? It will become AB because C has been cut off. So, ABD, ABD. And then it will become E F G and then it should become H I J and K L left with whatever next upcoming. Now we have seen it that when this one nucleotide was disturbed, suppose removed, not only this codone was disturbed, rather downstream all of them are disturbed because they are written continuously in the genetic code system in the DNA, but they signify and work in the form of triplet. Now, let us suppose ABC meant a minus one number 1, but when C is removed, it becomes ABD. Do you think it will be minus one number 1? No. Then DEF was, let us suppose, minus one number 10. It was coding for minus one number 10. But do you think EFG will be also coding for number 10? Answer is no. So, whole reading frame has been shifted. Is that right? Due to this reason, we can't say that uh, there is any, you can say, coma in between them. They are a continuous chain and if one is disturbed, all of that is disturbed. Another example I can give, if one is extra added, let us suppose A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K L. Now, let us suppose one abnormal is added. Suppose here we add C, extra C. Now, what will happen? All of it will be disturbed. A, B, C will be normal. It was originally D, E, F, but now it will be C, D, E. And which was supposed to be D, E, F, that has become C, D, E. And this F has gone with next. So what is happening? 
that in genetic code there are millions and millions of nucleotide but genetically they are red and triplets right if you add one nucleotide or delete one nucleotide or even add two nucleotide or delete two nucleotide the point where you have done addition or deletion downstream all the reading frame will be disturbed all the reading frame should be or would be disturbed this thing is telling us that this system is non overlapping and it is comaless right now let's come to the pr truly practical example we were saying here triple a mean amino acid number 1 attention please a g c end up with amino acid number 7 t a g end up with amino acid number 3 t double a actually end up suppose amino acid number 18 clear this was the peptide spore sequence which was coded by these four dna triplets nucleotide triplets clear now let's suppose because it is a continuous reading frame if we make a trouble you would like to delete something or add something to disturb it okay i leave it with you you want to delete something very bad what you want to delete out of this you want to delete g let's suppose we delete this g okay this oh you want to delete g boys are always naughty now let's suppose he has deleted g right now triple a will remain the same it will be still sign uh, signaling for coding for amino acid number one so it will remain the same but now it is no more a g c rather it has become a c t so here it will remain amino acid number one a g c was for amino acid number seven but because g has been removed so reading frame is a c t and maybe a c t is amino acid number four is that right then t a g was amino acid number three T A G was coding for amino acid number 3, but now it has become A G T and maybe this is coding for amino acid number 12, right? What has happened again? That you have deleted one point and whole reading frame has been disturbed. Is that clear? Any question up to this? We are talking about mutations and uh, we made the definition of mutations that mutations are changes in nucleotide sequence of dna right and these changes are permanent changes they are not repaired and they can be transferred to the next daughter cell or progeny cells even from one generation of uh, species to the next generation right it depends on if mutations are in somatic cells let's suppose in skin cell they may lead to cancer formation or even if this mutation in somatic cell occur before the birth, they may result in congenital malformations, right? Then, if mutations are in the germ cells, right? And if that mutations are compatible with life, and those mutant germ cells participate in formation of organism, zygote, then naturally the uh, the newborn will have inherited defect, right? Now we'll go to different types of mutations. Number one, there's a concept of point mutation. Point mutations. What is meant by point mutations? Point, point mutations mean that in the nucleotide sequence in DNA, one particular nucleotide is altered right that is point mutation what is point mutation when in the whole nu nu uh, genome somewhere a single nucleotide base is altered when a single nucleotide base is altered right and this is of course not repaired and it is capable of passing to the next generation of the cells right then we say there is point mutations. Now there are different types of point mutations. There are many way, different ways to talk about point mutations. For example, we say some of the point mutations are transitions. And other point mutations are transconversions. Now 
Now, what is the difference in transition and transconversion? Listen, if in a DNA sequence, for example, this is a DNA sequence, here there is thiamine, adenine, guanine, cytosine, cytosine, adenine, thiamine, guanine. Let's suppose this is a sequence and cytosine, adenine. Now, this is a sequence and there is complementary strand with the complementary. Now, let's suppose if pyrimidine is, this is pyrimidine, cytosine, it is altered and in place of it, thiamine comes or, or thiamine is altered and in place of it, cytosine come. It means pyrimidine is replaced by another type of pyrimidine, right? Or purine is replaced by other purine, right? Or this purine is replaced by another purine. Such type of situation where one pyrimidine is replaced by the other pyrimidine or purine is replaced by purine, we say these type of point mutations are transitions. These type of point mutations are called transitions. Right? We said what is point mutation? Point mutation is point mutation is one alteration in one single nucleotide base or nitrogenous base in the long DNA strand. Now, what there are so many types of point mutation. One way to look at the point mutation is that either pyrimidine is replaced by unwanted pyrimidine there, for example, where thiamine should be there, there is cytosine or where cytosine should be there, there is thiamine or purine is replaced by the other purine. For example, where guanine should be there, there is adenine or where should be adenine, there is guanine. So, this type of change is where pyrimidine is replaced by other pyrimidine or purine is replaced by other purine, we call them transitions. What we call them? Transition. Opposite to that, if there is change like this, that let's suppose here is DNA strand, another DNA strand and for example, I write adenine, guanine, cytosine, thiamine, thiamine, adenine, guanine, cytosine, cytosine, adenine, thiamine, adenine, guanine. Sometimes what happens that purine is replaced by either cytosine or by thiamine. right where should be purine it has been deleted and in, in place of it either there is cytosine or thiamine or a particular another example if this purine is replaced maybe again by cytosine or thiamine or pyrimidine is replaced by guanine or adenine or this thiamine is replaced by guanine or adenine. This type of situation where purine may be replaced by any of the two pyrimidines or one pyrimidine is replaced by any of the two purines, this type of mutations are called transconvergence. Right? So, this was one way to look at the point mutation. So, what is point mutation? Right? Point mutation means that in the genome, a particular one single nucleotide nitrogenous base has been altered. Now, what could be the alteration? Alteration may be transition or it may be transconversion. How we say that it is a transition? Okay, your spellings are better than mine. Transition. You want to put a T here? And I before T. Actually, I'm not that good in spellings. 
uh, when you want to write transition, write, write it like this. It is transition, yes. So you have to compare transition with transcarbohydrate. It's very easy. When a smaller base is replaced by a smaller base or larger base is replaced by larger base, it is transition. And when smaller base is replaced by larger base, right? Smaller are pyrimidines, larger are purines. Or larger base is replaced by smaller one, then it is transconversion. This concept is clear. Now, there is another way to look at point mutation. Other way to look at point mutation is when you look at the point mutations according to the effects of that. The particular point mutations uh, bring what type of effects in the organism, right? That is, we are classifying point mutations according to their consequences, right? First example is silent mutations. What is silent? What are silent mutations? Silent mutation mean. Silent mutation mean. that there is mutation but there is no effect on the amino acid type and sequence in the protein. Let me tell you what could be the examples of silent mutation. Let us suppose this is DNA. Right? Now, there are naturally nitrogenous bases on the both sides. Okay, I'll make a simple diagram in which uh, let's suppose here is one gene, here is another gene, right? These are two genes. If some mutation occur in spacer region, some nucleotide is altered, do you think there will be effect on protein synthesis? No. So this mutation is there because DNA nucleotide sequence has been altered, but is it having any effect? No. So we call it silent mutation. So silent mutation may be in the spacer DNA or silent mutation may be in the introns. For example, let us suppose this part is playing as an axon, this part of the DNA is axon, this is also axon and here is DNA part which is going to make intron. You know that when from DNA we make RNA, messenger RNA. those nucleotide sequences which are corresponding with the introns, they are removed. Is that right? Now, if this one is mutated, let us suppose in the intron, this point is mutated, central point. For example, where there should be adenine, there is guanine. But whatever is here, if it is going to be removed in a normal fashion, if this intron is going to be removed in a normal fashion, so, in spite of this mutation, will there be any effect on the protein synthesis? No. So, this mutation should be considered silent, silent mutation. So, silent mutation may be due to mutations in introns. Silent mutations may be mutations in the due to intron, right? Then there is another example of silent mutation. Let me tell you something very interesting before I go for third example of silent mutation that let us suppose that normally you see this is codone in the RNA. Let us suppose this is codone in the RNA. You see and A. Normally, you see A 
codes for serine it codes for serine whenever in messenger rna you see a codon appears it is coded for serine it means amino acid which will place itself here with its anticodon that amino acid should be carrying sorry transfer rna again if you see you see a is the codon in messenger rna right and transfer rna which will bind over here right with its anticodon that normally that is carrying serine now let's suppose there is some mutation in the dna and due to that reason reason this particular codon in messenger rna is altered in one way or the other way one way to alter this is that it has been altered in u c u it means if it was five end and that is three end which base has been altered first or third third base and let's suppose you remember wobble hypothesis right let's suppose transfer rna which adjusts here is also carrying the serine so mutation is there codon has been altered but amino acid which has been planted is the same as it was under normal circumstances so even this one is coding for serine right so it means this mutation is silent mutation this mutation is silent mutation is it clear so one example is of silent mutation one more example is yes mutation in third nucleotide nitrogenous base right right and what has had really happened that same amino acid is still coded right so in dna there was mutation but it did not result in any altered protein formation so again this is an example of silent mutation now we can say let's repeat what is silent mutation silent mutation is a mutation point mutation in which one nucleotide has been altered in dna sequence but there has been no effect on the protein synthesis simpler example work when mutation is in spacer dna right so naturally the transcripts which are produced they are normal number two when mutation is in the that part of the dna which is corresponding to intron formation in this case primary transcript may be having an abnormal nucleotide point but when mature rna will be formed after removal of intron it will be the same as normal and there will be no effect on the protein synthesis next example is that where coding region had nucleotide alteration right but in a particular codon third base was altered and due to wobel hypothesis it was still coding for the same amino acid so all these situations are examples of silent mutations right after the silent mutations then we can talk about the uca may change into suppose there is another mutation and it convert into c c a now it has gone to c c a it means if this codon and the messenger rna has been altered there must be alteration in the dna so point mutation in dna has altered the first nucleotide this was the five end again first nucleotide uca was coding for serine ucu was also coding for serine but cca is coding for proline in this particular example 
the codon which has been altered due to mutation has been sensed. But the amino acid which is placed over there is not which should be because codon is altered in such a way that now it is coding, coding for a different amino acid. This type of mutation in which codon is altered in such a way that altered codon has a different amino acid as compared to the such codon which is not mutated, right? So, this type of mutations are called missense mutations. Missense mutation, right? Where transfer RNA sensed the system. Missense mutations. Again, missense mutations. Okay, we will write it here. This is miss sense mutation because you are very sensitive to spelling. I am going to write like this. Now, there are miss sense mutations. What is miss sense mutation? It has nothing to do with any miss. Miss sense mutation means that there was point mutation in the DNA coding region. A particular codon was altered, and due to alteration in a codon, amino acid which was supposed to be there that is replaced by a different amino acid. Is that right? We call it missense mutations. Again, missense mutations are divided into three types acceptable, partially acceptable and unacceptable. Some missense mutations are acceptable. Some are partially acceptable. And some missense mutations are unacceptable. Let me give you an example. For example, you are waiting for Mr. XYZ. Right, you are waiting for Mr. XYZ. But someone else appear there. If someone else appear there, it's quite possible the replacement which is coming to you as a guest may be acceptable to you, maybe partially acceptable, maybe not acceptable at all. Same is true about that when a codon is altered, when codon is altered, altered codon may be coding for a different amino acid. Now, the replacement amino acid which is coming due to mutation, if it is very similar with the replaced amino acid, then maybe function of the protein is not altered and we say this mutation is acceptable. Sometimes it happens. For example, beta chain of hemoglobin, in the hemoglobin there is a alpha chains and beta chains. They have found few families in which there is a point mutation due to that reason a particular amino acid is altered. But in spite of the altered amino acid, they do not have any dysfunction in hemoglobin. So, we say point mutation is there and different amino acid is coming what should be there, right? So, missense mutation is there, but it is acceptable. But how do you differentiate these cases from the healthy or normal hemoglobin beta chain? Answer is the electrophoresis. So, it is functionally very much normal. Maybe during electrophoresis it behaves different way. Then partially acceptable. Sometimes it happens that due to alteration in codon, a different amino acid has come and due to that different amino acid, some of the properties are altered, not all the properties of the particular protein. Classical example is hemoglobin S, which is present in sickling disease. Hemoglobin S, all of you know in hemoglobin S, in the beta chain at position number 6, where there should be glutamic acid, that has been replaced by valine. Glutamic acid has been replaced by valine. 
this hemoglobin S at full oxygenation behaves somewhat normal way. It can take up the oxygen and it can release also. But at low oxygen tension, it's sickle. It means that it has some characteristics like normal and some are like abnormal. So we say this type of mutation, missense mutation is partially acceptable. Sometimes what happens? There is a point mutation and a very important amino acid is altered and alteration of that amino acid result into very significant uh, change in the structure and function of protein and protein does not function at all. If protein does not function at all uh, due to alteration in single amino acid, then we say this missense mutation is unacceptable. For example, if there is such a mutation which results into alteration of amino acid in beta chain of hemoglobin, and after that beta chain, mutant beta chain does not carry at all oxygen, then this should be considered unacceptable. Let me repeat again. What is point mutation? Point mutation means the mutation in one nucleotide base, right? This may be transitions or transconversions. Transitions where purines are replaced by purine or pyrimidines are replaced by pyrimidines. Transconversion where particular pyrimidine is replaced by any one of the two purines or any purine point is replaced by any one of the two pyrimidines. Once point mutation is there, then what are the consequences of that? First of all, consequences in term of minus acid placement. If mutation is there at a single point, but there is no change in minus acid sequence anywhere in protein synthesis, this mutation should be considered silent mutation. For example, mutation in spacer DNA or mutation in central part of introns and introns are normally removed and exons are normally spliced or when third nucleotide in the coding region of a codon or messenger RNA is altered. But in spite of third nucleotide alteration, right, the new transfer RNA which come, it is still carrying the same amino acid, right. So all these will be example of silent mutations. Then there can be missense mutation. Missense mutations are those mutations in which due to one nucleotide alteration, codone is altered in such a way that different than the original amino acid is inserted in the peptide chain. And when due to point mutation, a different amino acid is inserted in the peptide chain, this alteration may be acceptable, partially acceptable or unacceptable. This depends on the physical chemical characteristics of the new amino acid and original amino acid. If both are similar and in spite of alteration of one amino acid, still protein is structurally and functioning behaving very well and doing its function, then it should be considered acceptable. And if it is doing some of its function and not other functions, we call it partially acceptable. And if after replacement of amino acid, the new amino acid which is inserted due to point mutation, that amino acid is, has very different physical chemical characteristics than the original amino acid which was supposed to be there and protein drastically alters and it fails to perform any one of its normal function we say missense mutation is unacceptable. We say missense mutation is unacceptable. After that, there is one more type of mutation that is really nonsense. We call it nonsense mutation. Sense mutations. Let me tell you what is nonsense mutation. Let us suppose same this serine coding system is altered and it is altered in such a way 
that this convert into U A A. U A A means you are away. It means this is what type of codon here? Stop codon. Right? What is this? Stop codon. Now imagine there was a long messenger RNA. Let's suppose this is a long messenger RNA and these are the nucleotides there. These are the codons. Let's suppose stop codon is present here in the last part U A A. And here it was U C A. It means this particular UCA area was coding for serine. In messenger RNA, this was coding for serine. But if this is altered in the central point and it becomes UAA, it means when reading frame is going on, stop codon appears prematurely. Do you think now ribosome will translate up to the end? or they will partially make the protein and then ribosomes will disassemble? Answer is because alteration in the codon has resulted into formation of stop codon prematurely in the codon sequences. So what really happened? UCA which was supposed to code for serine, this has been altered into UAA. And because it has been converted into UAA, so the protein which will be made upstream to this codon, it will have normal amino acid sequence and it will be truncated prematurely. This protein will be truncated protein because it is a shorter peptide, it does not complete its translation. Right? This type of protein, these, uh, these type of proteins which are truncated, right? They are very rapidly degraded in the cell and of course there is a usually severe problem with the function of that protein. Is it clear? We call them truncated proteins and this type of mutations are called nonsense mutation. Let me repeat what is nonsense mutation? Nonsense mutation is when a coding in the messenger RNA, a coding codon has been altered in such a way that now rather than coding for an amino acid, it is converted into a stop codon. So, when translation is going on, it stops or terminations prematurely and peptide formed as truncated or smaller than the normal and usually it undergoes rapid auto degradation, right? And there is a severe problem with the function. So, such mutations are called nonsense mutation. So, we can say this is here an example of non-sense mutation. We call it nonsense mutation. After this nonsense mutation, we will come to one more type of mutation which is called frame shift mutations, right? Now, let us go to frame shift mutation. Frame shift mutation may be due to one nucleotide alteration, then they should be considered point mutation, or they may be due to two nucleotide alteration, right? Either two nucleotides are deleted, one or two nucleotides are unduly inserted or deleted from genomic set. Let me explain what is frame shift mutation. Let us suppose it is DNA template, nucleotide sequences, okay, I will write it simply, it is adenine, guanine, cytosine, cytosine, thiamine, adenine, thiamine, thiamine, adenine, guanine, cytosine, 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 adenine, thiamine, guanine, adenine, cytosine, thiamine. Now, 
suppose this is the template now let's suppose transcription starts this is the point which is the first uh, coding point so this is suppose first what is this codon second codon third codon fourth fifth sixth let's suppose this end up into amino acid number we are just supposing it amino acid number 3 amino acid number 7 amino acid number 13 amino acid number 12 we are just taking an example you can put the name also that this may be tryptophan this may be isoleucine this is leucine this is histidine whatever you want it is amino acid number 5 and this is amino acid number 19 suppose if you assign number to amino acid now let's suppose if we add one nucleotide at any position right let's suppose that codon number 2 at this point we add adenine now what really happens first codon will be normal second codon is altered which was cta it become still cta okay you can say it is still normal but it was supposed to be tta but it is att again down stream to that particular point all the game is altered now amino acid at position number one will be the same position number two will be even same but these will be now and onwards they will be altered right so we can say the reading frame of the whole downstream system has been altered that still it is coding for the amino acid but different than what was supposed to be originally coded is it clear this type of problem may be due to deletion uh, addition or deletion it's quite possible if let's suppose we rather than adding we delete one suppose we delete this one right now first will be the normal second will extend up to this third will go like that so and so fourth because first in what we have done we have removed one adenine and what is the result that first will take the normal amino acid second which was cta now it has become ctt right and in the same way third which was supposed to be thiamine thiamine adenine now it has become thiamine adenine guanine so again the whole reading frame is shifted so whenever you add or delete any number of nucleotides which are not the direct multiple of three which is not the direct multiple of three maybe one maybe two usually one or two right that may end up into altered sequence of amino acid downstream such proteins are of course very abnormal proteins and we call such proteins garbled proteins what are their name garbled proteins they are also very rapidly degraded and function of the protein is lost from the cell or tissue right again let me repeat it what are frame shift mutations i told you that basically dna genetic code is non overlapping and comaless so whenever one or two nucleotide are added or deleted right the triplet set sets of the triplet have been altered from the point of mutation onwards and that may result into altered coding of all the amino acid from the mutant point onwards and that may end up into very abnormal protein which is called which protein garbled protein which is called garbled protein right so this type of mutation is called frame shift mutations such mutations are called shift mutations right then there are other mutations also they are very simple to understand 
these mutations are simple deletions. A large segment of chromosome is deleted. Of course, it may be taking away many genes with itself or a significant number of nucleotide from a particular gene, right? We call them deletions. Especially that it's very interesting to understand large segment deletions large segment deletions during meiosis during first meiosis first meiosis meiosis in two parts huh? first meiosis and second meiosis Again, I should write it like this, meiosis, right? Let me explain what really happens during first stage of meiosis. meiosis. Actually, maternal and paternal homologous chromosome come near, then they exchange the blocks of DNA with each other. Normally, what happens? Let's suppose this is maternal chromosome number 1. This is maternal chromosome number 1. Of course, this is basically what? It is a double chromatids, two chromatids are there. In the same way, there are paternal chromosome number 1. What really happens? Let's suppose here is gene number 1 but maternal, here is gene number 1 but paternal, here is gene number 2 maternal, here is gene number 2 paternal, here is gene number 3 maternal, here is gene number 3 paternal, so and so forth. What really happens? These chromosomes will become very near to each other. They will exchange the blocks of DNA point to point and then they will se separate away. When they will separate away, what will really happen? Then the chromosome which was originally maternal and chromosome which was originally purely paternal, right? For example, in this chromosome now, gene number 1 may be maternal, gene number 2 may be paternal, gene number 3 may be maternal, gene number 4 may be paternal. And when you go over there, here gene number 1 is paternal and gene number 2 may be maternal, 3 may be paternal and 4th may be maternal. It means after the exchange of blocks of DNA, it does not remain purely maternal and it does not remain purely paternal. They become mosaics. Why nature is doing it? It's a very beautiful thing. Why nature is doing like that? If there is a girl, girl have a father and mother, right? Her mother's chromosome and her father's chromosome will come and exchange so that when girl will make ovum, in the ovum she can provide only 23 chromosome. But originally during the first stage of meiosis, 23 maternal chromosome of the girl and 23 paternal chromosome of the girl exchange their blocks of DNA. So, when she will make ovum, in ovum chromosome 1 will be only 1, but that chromosome number 1 which is present in the ovum of the girl that is having some of the genes from the mother of the girl and some of the genes from the father of the girl. Now, let us suppose she marries a boy. Now, that boy is having also of course, boys have mother and father both. So, boy's mother genes, mother chromosome will also make synapse and exchanges with boy's paternal chromosomes. Let us suppose boy has 10 number maternal chromosome and 10 number paternal chromosome. They will also exchange the blocks of genetic material and then segregate. And when sperm is formed, there is only one chromosome there, one chromosome number 10. Now, this is not purely maternal or it is not purely paternal. 
so sperm has 23 chromosomes but all of them have some of the genes from the mother of the boy and some of the genes from the father of the boy now imagine a boy from the new york and girl from california they meet they can just meet and see each other and go home or let's suppose they decide to have kids if they decide to have kids girl may provide an ovum in which she has chromosome number one which is from her mother and father genetic material boy will provide a sperm with chromosome number one and that chromosome one is having the genetic material from boy's father and mother so when baby is formed baby has two chromosome number one in the somatic cell one coming from the girl other coming from the boy is that right but actually baby has some genetic information coming from the girl's father and girl's mother and some genetic information from boy's father and boy's mother is that right so this is a normal phenomenon that during formation of ova or sperms during first stage of meiosis maternal and paternal homologous chromosome come near to each other and they exchange the blocks of genes and this ex exchange is so excellent and so accurate point to point that no mutations occur usually but sometimes rarely what happen that look the number of genes here a number of genes here let's suppose it has 900 genes here it should also have homologous chromosome should have 900 when the exchange and when they separate again both should have 900 and 900 but if some unfortunate thing happened during meiosis that it brings 900 and its homologous counterpart also brings 900 during exchange process there's unbalanced exchange and due to that reason let's suppose this is chromosome number five of mother this is chromosome number five of the father of the girl they exchange the material during this there were unbalanced exchange and this chromosome number five had lost more and gained less so it become shortened it become deleted and if this goes to mature ovum right even the sperm bring the normal chromosome number five right but what is happening ovum is with deleted chromosome number five under these circumstances if product of conception survive baby is born with some abnormality this microcephaly baby has mental retardation wide set eyes and baby may cry like a cat the condition is called called not cry do chat you call it chow or you can say whatever you want it is syndrome right in this syndrome there's deletion of chromosome number five chromosome number five is deleted when it is deleted when homologous chromosome came near to each other and they were making exchanges and they were unbalanced exchange is it clear of course the other side of the chromosome 5 got extra dose but usually that is not as dangerous because if uh, this has got the underdose and that has got overdose of the genes sometimes slight overdose may not produce a trouble but in this particular case the underdosing has produced a full syndrome is it clear now another example is especially in alpha thalassemias alpha thalassemia results due to underproduction of alpha chains the genes for the alpha chains they are present on chromosome number 16 of maternal as well as 16 of paternal for example if i say there is a boy here who has alpha thalassemia it means uh, he is underproducing which chains alpha chains usually this boy should receive of course one chromosome number 16 from mother and one from the father and on chromosome number 16 there are two genes for alpha chain from the mother side and there are two genes for alpha chains from the father side now let's suppose that this these two genes are deleted if these are deleted if these two genes are deleted what will happen 
the remaining two may not compensate completely for the loss and in the erythroblast production of alpha chain is reduced and baby may develop alpha thalassemia so these were two examples cry to chat and alpha thalassemia in which there is big deletions and those deletions have resulted into clinical problems right then there is another example another type of mutation rather we call them translocation mutations due to translocation or big genetic segments from one chromosome to other chromosomes this was large segment deletions another type is mutations due to translocation of genetic material locational mutations here is a very classical example that in b cell b lymphocytes b lymphocytes here is chromosome number 14 we have already discussed in some previous lectures chromosome number 14 here is chromosome number 8 and suppose here is chromosome number 18 right normally on chromosome number 14 immunoglobulin gene is very active right now there is a myc gene myc gene on chromosome number 8 and when myc gene is present on the chromosome number 8 it is well regulated it is well it has a regulator region which is regulating and it is not allowed to over express is that right now due to some reason if myc translocates in the vicinity of the immunoglobulin gene on chromosome number 14 then myc will be overexpressed and whenever myc proteins are overexpressed they force the cell to overproliferate because it is one of the oncogene when they force the cell to overproliferate the cell may become neoplastic or fully malignant and that malignancy when there is translocation between 8 and 14 this situation is called Burkitt's lymphoma Burkitt lymphoma again let me repeat it in a patient of Burkitt lymphoma what really happens some of the B cells in the body of the patient for example there is one B cell in the body of a patient and that particular B cell there are so many B cells out of those one suffers with mutation what type of mutation alteration in nucleotide sequence how they are altered a big segment of 8 is translocated with the 14 and if for example myc gene when it is present on chromosome number 8 it is well regulated if it is it has been translocated in the vicinity of immunoglobulin genes which are hyperactive right very very active in this cell the chromosome number 14 then myc in the environment of overactive gene may also start expressing its product excessively that may force the cell to over proliferate and person may develop burkus lymphoma in the same way sometimes what happens there is a gene on chromosome number 18 and this gene is called bcl2 gene when this gene remain on the chromosome number 18 it is well controlled there and it does not over express right but if this translocate on chromosome number 14 bcl2 again in the vicinity of immunoglobulin gene bcl2 will overexpress and if bcl2 overexpresses there what will happen if bcl2 overexpresses cell will overlive because bcl2 is responsible for the longevity of the cell the product of the bcl2 gene determine the duration of the cell life so when bcl2 overexpress itself lymphocyte overlive and accumulate in the body and if they accumulate in very big number and they become sort of neoplastic growth we call it follicular lymphoma b cell follicular lymphoma so here we have seen two examples in which translocation of the genetic material from one chromosome to the other chromosome and has resulted in 
म्यूटेशन एंड कैंसर फॉर्मेशन इज देर एनी क्वेश्चन हियर इज इट क्लियर टू एवरी वन क्लियर है नाउ वी कम टू वन मोर टाइप ऑफ म्यूटेशन एंड दैट म्यूटेशन इज म्यूटेशन रिलेटेड विद द सप्लाइसिंग okay before that we go do some easy mutation you remember when we were repeatedly talking about genes and we were saying that gene has a promoter box for example the tata region let's suppose the mutation in promoter box mutations of promoter box if there is a mutation in the promoter box you know promoter box is a point where from where rna polymerase enter right and then they start doing transcription the promoter its box itself is not transcribed now promoter box is altered or mutant then it may underwork or overwork it means the total number of primary transcript which are produced may be less than normal number or more than normal number but a minor sequ uh, codon sequence within the messenger rna will be absolutely normal so it means it will not bring the promoter box mutation occur such mutation will not bring qualitative changes in messenger rna they will bring quantitative changes in messenger rna so what will be the real result that when promoter box mutation is there promoter box may under express or over express which may lead to under transcription or over transcription of the normal transcript pattern that may result into less than normal formation of proteins or more than normal formation of proteins but all the proteins which are produced are still normal so again due to mutations in promoter promoter boxes and the mutated due to mutations in promoter boxes the amount of protein in the cell now few more types of mutations one of the interesting type of mutation is mutations resulting in abnormal intron removals mutations resulting in in abnormal intron removal abnormal intron removal and axons splicing okay let's suppose here the dna sequence this is one particular area this is a one gene and in this gene suppose here was promoter box here is termination region and this is a coding area in this template let's suppose this these nucleotide sequences are concerned with axon these are introns and then axon number 2 then intron and then axon then introns and then axon how many axons corresponding dna is present 1 2 3 and 4 when messenger rna is formed right now axon 1 axon 2 axon 3 axon 4 now these are intron in between all of you know that these introns are the intervening region in between the axons which should be removed and axons should be spliced with each other let's suppose here is 5 and and here it is then 3 and now this site is called introns the site on the junction of intron and axon on the 5 end is called donor point 
and this is called acceptor point. What should really happen? Listen carefully. Here, this is G U and A G. Right? Sequences, consensus sequences, these point is G U and A G. Actually, when your small nuclear RNA with its protein come, it is able to bind here and able to bind here. Right? These two points and bring them together, remove them and then bind exon number 1 and 2 with each other, right. What should really happen that exon number 1 and exon number 2 should fuse and intervening introns is removed by this machinery which is called spliceosome. Is it clear? Now, you see at this a donor point and acceptor point, there are special sequence which signal the spliceosome machinery where to bind two points and remove the introns. Now, let's suppose due to some mutation, these sites are altered. How they are altered? Let's suppose that AG, which is supposed to be here after the mutation. AG is formed here. If AG is formed here, it means there are now two acceptor sites, one mutational, another normal, right? For example, here it was AA, but one A has been removed by G, so now it becomes AG. In this case, donor site will be normal, but acceptor site, if this bind here and remove a segment shorter than the intron, then some nucleotides are left behind which was supposed to be removed and messenger RNA which will be formed that is mature messenger RNA is abnormal. Why this mutation was there? Because mutation was somewhere here. Mutation was primarily in the DNA. Because mutation was present in the DNA which resulted into premature appearance of acceptor site. So, do you think in this case complete intron will be normally removed answer is no this is one problem which may occur into abnormal splicing another problem may be look here let's suppose this convert into this point is mutated this particular point right okay we can go to the next example to see it more clearly ideally the splicer sum should bind here and should bind here, right. Let us pause attention please that this convert into by after mutation not AG rather GG. Suppose here was a mutation and it means acceptor site has been lost. In this case this funny spliceosome will catch from here look here, catch from here and then it will catch from here. And in this case, it will remove two introns with including exon and again messenger RNA will be normal or abnormal, abnormal and this abnormal supply thing will result into abnormal proteins. So, there are many types of problems when supply thing become abnormal. When acceptor coding system or donor site coding system is disturbed, donor or acceptor, sometimes Introns are removed partially and some of nucleotides are left behind. Sometimes intron is removed along with unduly some nucleotide from the axon. Sometimes two introns are removed by one spliceosome and axon present within that system is unduly completely excised. So, of course, that will end up into a normal protein formation and that will be naturally producing disease depending upon the function of the protein. Then there is one more type of mutation. This was abnormal splicing. Now we can go to one more type of mutations. Let us suppose these are called, okay, let us suppose this is DNA, 
very long molecule of DNA and double stranded. Here are multiple genes. Usually in between the gene where, where there is spacer DNA, there is special nucleotide sequences which are called transposons. Transposons. Usually these transposons are present in introns or they are present in spacer DNA. You can say these are the sons of transporters. These are jumping genes. These are jumping genes. You can say these genes have legs and they are jumping around and laughing at you. This gene segment. This is jumping gene. Transposons. Normally they keep on jumping in human genome from usually from spacer to spacer. So there is no big problem for us. But sometimes they jump wrongly. For example, one transposon jump into gene of insulin and integrate within the coding system. Do you think insulin will be produced normal? No. So sometimes mutations are produced by inappropriate insertions of transposons in the coding region. These are called insertional mutations or abnormal transposons doing abnormal insertions. There are some other genes which also have high mobility, some genetic segments within DNA, but they are smaller than transposons. We just call them insertional sequences. If you really want to know what are these transposons, they believe these are the genome of some viruses which are left their footprints in human genome and they are highly mobile and keep on jumping within the human genome. Is it clear or I should recap? Clear, hopefully, right. Now the last type of mutation that is trinucleotide repeat mutations. There is, there are trinucleotide repeat mutations. These are very interesting type of mutations. Sometimes in some genes, there are some trinucleotide pattern, some triplets which normally occur repeatedly in a tandem fashion. Tandem fashion means multiple copies one after the other. Let us suppose there is a gene for a protein called Huntington's. Protein is called Huntington's. In protein, gene which is called protein of the Huntington or gene of the Huntington, right, this is special nucleotide repeats. And these nucleotide repeats consist of CAG, CAG. Now, there are many CAGs in everyone, in all of us, in this gene, there are many CAG repeats. CAG, 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 of course, on other side there should be complementary CAG, CAG and so and so forth. Now, normal population. These strike nucleotide repeats are less than 30. They are less than 30 in gene, maybe 5 or 10 or 15, depending upon person to person and family to family. In some people, they amplify. When I mean they amplify, mean that if the normal number is upper limit is 29 or 30, for example, they become 100. It means when DNA replication was going on, they are over replicated, right? It is just like as your photostat machine, when you are photostating a book, photostat machine stuck with one page and that page is over copied. The same way, sometimes these trinucleotide repeats are amplified, especially during meiosis. It means during gametogenesis when females are making ova or men are making sperms. Some trinucleotide repeats may undergo amplification. 
if they amplify in a pathological number that may result into some protein which is abnormal. For example, in Huntington's disease, what really happens in Huntington's disease that in Huntington's disease there are trinucleotide repeat CAG and these repeat CAG normally CAG triplet codone code for glutamine right so it means in this protein Huntington protein there are few glutamines but if CAG is over amplified it means glutamine residues will be less than normal or more than normal more than normal and that may result into abnormal type of proteins and when this protein is abnormal it may functionally result into a disease called Huntington's chorea. This disease start around the age of 45 to 50 usually and patient develop coriform movements and mental dysfunctions, mood disturbances, irritability, right, then brain atrophy and eventually it leads to death. Now, there is one interesting phenomenon that such diseases, there is another disease called fragile X chromosome, fragile X chromosome, right, that is also related with the mental retardation and it also has some trinucleotide repeat amplification. Then there is another disease myotonia dystrophica in which also some trinucleotide repeats are amplified. Now there are many diseases in which they have found a particular type of trinucleotide repeats are amplified unduly. Usually these are amplified during gametogenesis. It means let us suppose father has 40 repeats. When father will make sperm if during spermatogenesis amplification occur, maybe son will have 50 repeats, then grandson may have 60 repeats, so and so forth. So it means generation after generation, this defect is getting worse or better, worse. So trinucleotide repeat mutations have one very unique feature. We call them that these mutations are dynamic. Dynamic means that when from one generation, this mutation go to the next generation, usually during oogenesis or spermatogenesis, uh, trinucleotide repeat amplify further. So usually the diseases associated with trinucleotide repeat generation after generation, these diseases get worse. They start at earlier age and they come with more severe clinical presentations. This clinical phenomenon is called genetic anticipation. We call it phenomenon of anticipation. Anticipation means that in these diseases we anticipate that generation after generation disease will appear at a younger age and it will appear in with more severity. Is it clear? Now let me recap. Many genes have trinucleotide repeat, right? Usually these repeats have C and G definitely there. And in normal persons, these repeats have a specified number. And in normal persons, these trinucleotide repeats are not more than specified number. And some people, unfortunately, during gametogenesis or oogenesis, trinucleotide repeats are unduly amplified. And if they become over amplified or pathologically increase in number, they may disturb the uh, formation of certain proteins. And that may end up into different type of clinical syndromes or problems, right? The classical example is Huntington's chorea, then some other diseases related with the same trinucleotide, different trinucleotide repeat expansion is like myotonica dystrophica or there is another condition called fragile X chromosome disease which lead to mental retardation. In all these diseases, there is a problem that this mutation specially amplifies during gametogenesis. So usually generation after generation disease become more and more ugly and what way it's getting ugly disease and that patients start appearing at earlier age and with more severe clinical presentations and this phenomenon is called phenomenon of anticipation is that right and such genes like trinucleotide with generation after generation they keep on 
getting worse such genes are called uh, such mutations are called dynamic mutations is it clear 